И он да се врати и ти угаси в това. Да, да, да.
heard the girl ask for a king and then and then you shoot. We don't have to be all done by it. Period. One is a reference period from 1988 to 1999, 
and we have our experimental period when uh, the measurements are done from 2000 to 2002. And we can see that the coldest month is January with temperature around 5 Celsius degree. And you can see that the warmest month is July with temperature of 24 uh, degree. And uh, if you look, we can see so the gray uh, gray is uh, uh, our experimental period, and white is uh, environment uh, is a preference period from 88 to 99. And we can see the lack of uh, precipitation in summer uh, in this period from 2000 to 2002 and the author said that it was because of course 2000 was very very warm and dry year so they had a lack of precipitation in that month so you can see the difference between uh, June in, uh, in period from 88 to 99 and this but uh, we can see that in summer there is like a it's less precipitation of course and uh, the most rainfall is in uh, May, in both cases. Uh, if you look to torquite agroclimatic classification, uh, this, uh, this location is uh, classified as semi-arid, mesothermic, with a total lack or a, a scarce excess of humidity and with a moderate concentration of water demand in summer. We are not agronomers, but I feel needed to say that soil is cataloged as petrocalcic uh, calci, sediments, which is silty clay loam with 30% of sand, 49% of silt, and 37.69% of clay. Total available water for uh, this kind of uh, soil is uh, calculated and it's uh, 30. 34.2 uh, millimeters. Uh, now to say something about equipment that is used for uh, measuring, uh, we use lysimeter. Uh, lysimeter is used to measure uh, percolation beneath the vegeta vegetation root zone and water used through evaporative process from uh, vegetation and. Uh, how do we set up this instrument? We excave a column of uh, clay and then we put a uh, lysimeter and then we put back this clay and it weighs uh, uh, everything about it and it's very precise it can, uh, it can uh, it's uh, in milligrams precise and when I was looking about lysimeters they said that this is, uh, this is uh, uh, some measuring equipment that politicians like because it's very precise, it's huge and it gives a great picture opportunity for them to, <laughs> to take uh, because uh, under, the, under, the, uh, under the soil uh, there are data loggers and you can see the equipment under and above the uh, ground. And in order to establish the hydric state of the soil and uh, uniformity through its profile, a uh, battery of uh, tensiometers were installed in the lysimeters recipient itself at various depths. Uh, tensiometers are also uh, some uh, instrument that I remember use uh, for that case. Uh, two time domain reflector meter soil moisture sensors. Uh, were used for calculation of uh, soil water contact. So uh, sensors are sensitive to mass change, as I said, so they are very precise. And because of that, a lot of uh, data is uh, need to be uh, moved from uh, measurements because even moving can uh, can be a source of mistakes in that. So uh, and to uh, to maintain the uh, higher hydraulical state of the ground, uh, there were sprinkles which uh, spread water every evening when is uh, where there is no way of transpiration, so that the results can can be uh, uniform. So, how many lysimeters are there on the right picture? Is that uh, this is not uh, this is not a picture from the, uh, I don't have a picture. They didn't present the picture in article. 
this the, here are I think uh, eight resonators, and they have only three resonators in in uh, the uh, in the in, in their study. Yes, but I think this is eight resonator. This is uh, this is one resonator. Uh, next to Lysimeter, agrometrological station was installed and uh, it measured air temperature at 2 meters above the ground, relative air humidity, net short wave radiation, uh, net long wave radiation, wind velocity, soil heat flux, and atmospheric pressure. Sensors were uh, connected with two data loggers, uh, which uh, data was stored every 10 minutes, hourly and daily. So this is a very big amount of data uh, even for visimeters and for agrometeorological station. Why is this important to us? Well, uh, for now we come to equations for um, calculating uh, evapotranspiration because visimeters are not usually used in meteorological uh, service to calculate evapotranspiration. So we need some equation who can uh, estimate uh, uh, how much of evapotranspiration is. Uh, here are seven, I will be present to you seven equations for uh, evapotranspiration. The first two is number one and number two, and if you look to them, they are the same <laughs> equation. Uh, it's a corrected Penman, but only difference is this uh, adjustment factor C. Uh, in, in equation number one, C is a table value uh, and it uh, depends on relative humidity, uh, mean temperature and, uh, and uh, net radiation. Here, uh, this is not the table value, uh, it's equation, which I didn't give you because it's huge and uh, this equation uh, uses all these parameters too, but so this is more deterministic, so let's, let's, let's say like that. Uh, delta is a slope of separation vapor pressure, temperature curve. Uh, Rn is net radiation. I said that uh, C is adjusted factor. And F, Fu is a uh, wind function, uh, which has itself wind in 2 meters above the ground. Uh, uh, As is mean saturation vapor pressure. Uh, Ea is actual vapor pressure, and E0 is saturation is saturation vapor pressure. So these are these are the first two equation. Then we have uh, what is gamma? Uh, gamma is a psychometric constant. Okay. So this is constant. And what is the range of C values? What is the typical positive negative? Uh, it's positive. It's uh, I think is uh, I'm not sure at this moment. I think it's below one. From yeah. zero to one, but I'm not sure. I need Put to check. Here, I have the table here and the equation, but I need to check. Uh, here are the next two equations. First is Penman, and you can see uh, a lot of things delta, Rn, and gamma are the same from the slide before. But here is Ea, and Ea is aerodynamic term. Uh, and it's calculated as this. Uh, equation number four is FAO24 uh, blending cradle equation, and this is uh, equation, and it has AB and BB, and these are coefficients of the linear equation that relate E, e evapotranspiration and F, whereas F, this factor, which consists of mean daily percent of annual daytime hour, and mean air temperature. So these are regression uh, coefficients. There are also table values of, uh, of uh, that. And the last three equations, uh, first, number five, is the FAO24 radiation equation. Uh, it has, uh, it calculates the transpiration like this, and A is constant as 0.3 millimeters per day. And B is adjustment factor that series with mean relative humidity and data wind speed. It's also table table value. And the double V is a weighting factor. It includes temperature and altitude in the relationship between soil surface radiation and crop 
reference uh, photoaspiration, and S is solar, uh, solar radiation. Uh, here is a uh, Hargreaves equation, and this equation is uh, very important to us because it only has uh, mean daily temperature, maximum daily temperature, and minimum daily temperature. So, you saw all other equations have a lot of parameters. It has uh, radiation, it has wind, it has, this has only temperature. And that's why this equation is so important to us. Or if we can predict our transpiration with this equation, it will be great because this area, except uh, terrestrial radiation, this is a constant. It's 0 0.408. Uh, 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 this is the last equation, which is uh, now uh, food uh, agency. Uh, FAO is, um, uh, is uh, telling that this is the best equation for calculation of evapotranspiration. And this is the equation. G is soil heat flux density. Uh, in, uh, and gamma is a psychometric constant, as I already said. But to calculate this equation, there are also a lot of parameters that we need and that usually are not uh, collected in meteorological stations. There are some parameterization of this equation that uh, so you can calculate the evapotranspiration even here with only relative daily uh, measurements of relative humidity, minimum, maximum, and mean temperature. But it's also uh, it's more complicated than this equation, which is the easiest one, and we hope that this equation gives us better results. Is U2 uh, wind at 2 meters? Yes, this wind uh, 2 meters above the ground. Yes. Which is also very tricky because we measure wind 10 meters above the ground, so we need to have a function that will uh, yes, calculate. Whole another world. Whole another world. Yes, they have. Sure they are using only a book of uh, yes. theory to go up to the 2 meters. Yes. Yeah. I, when I was doing this equation for so the transpiration because I needed, uh, I was doing with this equation to, uh, because I had uh, measurements 10 meters above the ground, so I need to do it. So that's a little bit tricky and always there is something, mistakes in there, but that's the best thing is that we can do at this moment. And uh, evaluation model uh, methods for calculating uh, precision of our metals were simple regression analysis and errors were, was calculated as root mean square error uh, where PE is um, uh, predicted evapotranspiration and OE is observed evapotranspiration relative error uh, is given by this where this is average uh, observed evapotranspiration and there was also an index of agreement which is uh, done like this and if d is equal to 1 that means that, uh, that our equations agree with uh, evapotranspiration measured with uh, this method so let's go to results uh, First, we have a evaluation of uh, evapotranspiration calculation methods during the entire year. And I'm not sure how good do you see uh, here, but we can see that FAO uh, uh, method, PEN, FAO PEMAN method, this is the last method, number seven, is the most precise one. If you, if you look, uh, just average uh, average evapotranspiration uh, in day. It, it was 3.52 uh, millimeters per day, and it, uh, this method uh, predicted 3.63 uh, millimeters per day, per day. But this measure is not maybe so important as the other ones. For example, coefficient, uh, uh, coefficient of determination is uh, 0.91. And uh, for all of these methods, uh, this uh, coefficient, coefficient is uh, relevant, very relevant. So uh, when the statistical test is, was done, uh, they saw that uh, it was very relevant. And the other, the, the second best method is uh, Hargreaves method, which is very good for us because I said it only used uh, three parameters. 
and uh, its coefficient, uh, coefficient of determination is uh, 0 0.84. Uh, the next is foul, and the, all the other methods are not so good. Uh, the first two methods, corrected Penman, uh, they overestimate uh, uh, evapotranspiration, and uh, Penman, uh, this method uh, underestimate, and especially uh, blamely Creel method, it over overestimate a lot of evapotranspiration. Uh, the same thing is done with uh, uh, coefficient of uh, index uh, of agreement. We can see that the best method is Penman Monte, and Harvey's is the second one. And the same thing is with root mean square error, if you look. For the best three methods, so Harvey's uh, radiation and Penman, we uh, gave uh, these graphs, and we can see on, on them that, for example, uh, Penman uh, Moite method uh, overestimated low evapotranspiration and under underestimated high uh, evapotranspiration. And radiation method overestimated uh, from low and high, but not, not a lot, but it overestimated in whole, whole range. And uh, uh, similarly to Penman method, it was Harvey's method who overestimated low, uh, low evapotranspiration and other underestimated high evapotranspiration. But we can see that uh, R uh, is uh, better for this method. Then we divided uh, the period in uh, uh, in the period with higher evaporatic demand and low evaporatic demand. And these are the results of high evaporatic demand. And the results are very similar uh, to when we look entire year. Uh, again, uh, this method was the best, Peman Monte, and then was the Harvey's and radiation method. And if you look, just, uh, just average uh, evapotranspiration, we can see that uh, estimated and measured evapotranspirations are the same. So 5.57 uh, is in both cases. Uh, but of course, when we will look about the graph uh, as earlier, we can see that it's not so ideal, uh, but uh, it's OK. And then the next method is Harker's method. And then, as I say, it's radiation method. We can see that these square errors are um, uh, a little bit bigger this time, and we can see that uh, coefficient, that coefficient of determination is uh, smaller. So we can say that in this picture we can see uh, that uh, correlations between measurements and uh, uh, and estimation is. Uh, not, not so good as in previous case, but we can see that it's quite good uh, still for uh, Penman method. And we can see that uh, radiation method uh, usually overestimates uh, 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 evapotranspiration. That was something similar that we got in an uh, entire year, where we have that this method overestimates all the values. Here, it's underestimate the most uh, high values of evapotranspiration. And this is the Harbus method. We can all also see that it overestimates uh, small values of evapotranspiration and that it underestimated uh, uh, the high values of evapotranspiration. And the last, we did this uh, evaluation uh, for a lower evaporative demand and the results are the same, but worse uh, for all the methods. We can see that Penman uh, overestimate now this uh, evapotranspiration, uh, and that Hargreaves uh, underestimate, but a little bit. And we can see that uh, coefficient of determination is much lower in this case. If you look at 
the pictures, we can see this is what I was saying, what we saw in tables, so we can see that still PEMAN is the best method, but uh, we can see that it now it overestimates uh, usually uh, everything that's calculated in uh, evapotranspiration by this method. So, to conclude, uh, how uh, 56 PEMAN uh, method was the most adequate for calculating average daily evapotranspiration when comparing to resimeter measurements. And Hargreaves equation was the second most precise, then FAL24 radiation method. ET quantification must be preceded by determination of reference evapotranspiration, and similar results are in periods of high and low evaporative demand. And as we saw that uh, maybe these equations need uh, another check out. So uh, that was uh, done with Hargreaves equation for two, uh, for two conditions. First was semi arid condition. This is also a result from Spain, Andalusia. And just to remember, this is equation of, uh, of Hargreaves equation for evapotranspiration. And now, what we can change, we can change this constant and we can change this constant. And of course, we can change this constant. So, we want to, uh, that uh, uh, these equations give the similar results as Penman 56 equation, that's the seventh equation which gave the best results, because of course, we now don't have these meta measurements, and Penman method is a method that is done. Uh, for uh, food agency uh, to calculate the output transpiration. So, uh, they divided uh, the, the measurement, uh, uh, measurements of temperature is done in Andalusia and they divided them in four regions. Uh, the term, uh, this is delta T and that's the difference between minimum and maximum daily temperature and wind speed. And, uh, they got results. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the uh, wrong uh, wrong sign. There should be that uh, WB here is uh, smaller than 1.5 meters per second, and here are higher uh, values of from of 1.5 meters per second. So they uh, in their work they said that we should change uh, this parameter 0. Point uh, 0, 0, 0.023 to 0 0.0021 when delta T is higher than 12 uh, Celsius degree and W uh, and V is smaller than 1.5 meters per second and uh, to change it uh, in uh, 0 0.0027 when delta T is smaller than uh, 12 uh, Celsius, Celsius degree and that V is higher than 1.5 meters per second and uh, they also calculated uh, root mean square error and maximum and minimum and mean values uh, and they got better results when they done this. For the other cases they don't uh, they didn't uh, they didn't change anything in this equation. And these were, these were much better results when it's adjust adjustment like this. So they can uh, they they say that uh, in semi-air conditions, we can change uh, like this, and we will uh, have a better, uh, better results for evapotranspiration. And that uh, these results can be uh, also done in some other Mediterranean regions, and that it could be maybe done in Croatia. Uh, but also, there is uh, what to do with uh, calibration. Uh, when, uh, when the conditions are humid, and this is a research of Slavisha Trajkovic from Serbia, and he uh, took eight uh, measuring stations in Croatia, Serbia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina, and uh, he wanted to change. So this is uh, ET modified. Uh, he changed this parameter in this 0 0.5 to 0 0.424, and uh, we can see how much better the results are when we change on this parameter. 
and then he only took two Croatian cities, Varaždin and Zagreb. Uh, and I calculated uh, this equation and Tenman equation, and I, uh, I wanted to solve in other uh, cities in Croatia, in uh, humid areas, and I got also much better result for this. This is in millimeters per day, right? Yes, this is millimeters per day, this is daily transpiration. So I think that this uh, adjustment is quite good for uh, Croatia for humid conditions. When I was doing uh, the other equation for uh, Dalmatia cities in Croatia, I didn't get so, so good uh, results uh, compared to Penman. And this, later I find some uh, papers that say that maybe we need to adjust this coefficient uh, per month. So that one month will be one value, the other month will be the other value. I think this is the still gray area and maybe this is a good for someone to study or to have their master's uh, thesis, thesis or something like that. This is because this could be useful if someone wants to, <laughs> to use this data or if it's important to someone. So that's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie, for introducing this difficult subject that this finally comes to Croatian Agrome Micro Meteorological Society. Area. So uh, please go on with questions. Uh, I wasn't paying attention on the x-axis when you were showing uh, high and low demands of uh, air transpiration. I was just interested, did they specify, uh, so those are for low, right? Yes. And can you just show uh, for high demand? Uh -huh, okay. So, so the scale is different. Yes, Except they change the scale. This is from 0 to 10 and they were from 0 to 6. Yes. So, uh -huh. and how did they decide? Uh, so they just had like a whole data set and set, set some threshold and said we will observe only days when we measure the low demand and compare? No, I think that th these are the months. For example, uh, high demand is in summer and low demand is in winter time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So th these are by seasons, so let's say. Because it's interesting actually that here the total amount of evaporated water from the soil throughout the day is up to 10 millimeters. And in, in cases when they have like a winter scenario, I think. Yes. Also has a point where there is like around six millimeters. It, it, it could be spring, spring, yes, it could be in the spur of spring or I'm not they didn't say how did they divide it, they just said that there were uh, two hundred and fifteen I think uh, days that they use in uh, Whole. No, 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 ah, in total. whole total because, well, I, as I said, some days need to be uh, moved because uh, there was mowing, there was uh, yeah. uh, precipitation, for example, that changed. Uh, we c you cannot measure with lusimeter, I think, uh, when, uh, when, it's precip precipitate because, when it's precipitation because uh, you have a lot of results. Yes. I'm just wondering um, about that best method, Tenman and something. Uh, they have uh, or they had uh, all the necessary measurements for this equation, which, uh, or they interpolate or approximate with something. Yes. Do they have all data? Yes. We, yes. for example, for Croatia, we, for our index of minus, we use this. Uh, this equation and for every well, it's a little bit of a gray area because uh, we saw from which parameter from this parameter that uh, if we calculate uh, with uh, relative humidity and we have this that we can have relative humidity uh, higher than 100% for example we can get 105 uh, if you remember that, yeah, I can yeah. so this is a little bit tricky. But they have 
um, we can do this equation only with daily measurements of relative humidity, uh, minimum, maximum wind temperature, and we need um, 50 is the wind, wind speed. Yeah, yeah, but in, in that paper, they have all necessary measurements, for example, yes. saying that 2 meters, for example, I don't know, measurements to calculate this. Uh, that, uh, I think, so yes, because yeah, they, they have, have uh, uh, they have radiation, um, if you look at this, okay. uh, they have, they uh, measure wind velocity at 2 meters, not at 10 meters, and they have, I uh, saw so heat flux, net long wave radiation, and that shows. So actually, they are, they are, they are uh, organize uh, yes, those to, measurements according to the. I'm not sure, can we do this in Yaspina, <laughs> for example? Do we have these measurements in Yaspina? I don't know, I don't think we have. Actually, we can do that. that uh, for, for example, do we have anything in Yaspina? Yes. Short yes. We have, I think, wind at 2 meters or 1 and a half, I think. Currently, the net radiometry uh, yeah. are two meters in the limits. In the limits, yeah. And, and that can be interpolated with the limits from above. Uh, and we have to choose the, the, the pitch function to use. I think that we have a couple of two meters, actually. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, yeah. We do have that either two or four meters. So we have two four. meteorological levels and, and one inside. That's global. Most of this is global. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, Maya. Yeah. Would you go to. Uh, okay, uh, first of all, I have no critique to you, but I want to be, raise up the discussion. I, I like very much the way how you prepare things. Uh, please remember the fifth dot is two meters wind. This is, this is a pain in the butt. But uh, go back to a former slide where you had expression for evapotranspiration, temperature, things. Uh, uh, one more. Uh, somewhere where temperature had a uh, uh, square root. It had like that's one. Yeah, okay, okay. Look at the equation six. Yes. Here we have a, a temperature, we have a coefficient some dimensions. Then we have temperature times square root of temperature. Okay, we get it? So it's temperature on power 1.5. So would you now go to your second last uh, uh, graph about Serbians, or dearest friends, especially out of the war, uh, colleagues, yeah. Uh, look at the equation 14. Now they... They change this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, the, the most critical point is where somebody can get a PhD easily to make dimensions right. Because this is statistical equation. These cannot be used in models easily. So, so I, I suggest that when you go to Novi Sad that you discuss any of these and, 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 and you make a kind of like a uh, agreement where to go on. First of all, when I see this, this is ugly. This is not physically correct. Yes, this is because in this. You see what is yeah. there? R. R. Uh, this, this is the radiation. Radiation. Yes. In mega joule. In pure, uh, pure radiation. No. Um, yes, this or is. Or maybe divided with something. Uh, extraterrestrial yeah. radiation. But dimensions must be. Yeah, I think it's zero point four four zero eight. But let's go to back, back to basics. Whatever it is, whatever it is. It doesn't matter the number. Go back to the second last equation. Uh, look at this power. This is just a statistically made up thing in the equation 14. That must be correct. So the way we proceed here is to make it dimensionless. You should, uh, uh, not, not you, whoever will proceed with that should make uh, a temperature in the denominator and make it more useful because dimensions here are uh, Physically incorrect. Yes. Totally incorrect. Yes. And, and, and then things can dance forever. So that is a fixing norm that often modelers use, and that is wrong. And that is a source of many of the errors. So that's definitely one point to attack. Another point to go to these two meters wind, that is also a, a very difficult thing. Yeah. 
and we have error is in millimeters per day. Yes. Radiation is in millimeters per day. Yes, it's usually in. in so that has been transformed. This is like alien, uh, the, the eight traveler. Uh, uh, I mean, this is this is totally convoluted. So, so, so there is a jungle. Okay, but this constant 0 0.0.3 could hide, let's yeah, say, course, the of course it does. Of course it does. Of course, I, I don't deny that. But I, I'm saying that this must be attacked. That that is definitely where where the research should go. I and now to change uh, 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 some subject is the toward the limit of two meters. That is a uh, notoriously difficult point to get. And uh, do you know how they use it? I mean, Selenstein Dinklage had his expressions from 70s, but that is then all. And that's all based on what Maya said. I can, I can give you the formula that I calculated the, the wind in two meters in office. I have not to contribute, uh, contribute to that because that is a thing that nobody is really working on. And that is wrong in the models. Of course, that Selenstein Dinklage and the Russians do not depart from Obuko theory because it's, it's their culture. However, that is just uh, out of date. Yes, because I said that food agency, FAO, is mm -hmm. short for food and other cultural mm -hmm. organizations. You can see this organization, yes. Uh, let's say in, in modeling books, you remember my, my, uh, the Bible of Gilded. Uh, they, uh, they used also the Dinklage formula to get this, uh, let's say, you, if you need a bit, uh, two meters or half a meter. But this is out of date. Today, there are better equations. So, so, one thing is to address this physically correct. Another direction is to go to uh, interpolate wind two meters according to, let's say, vegetation or whatever is happening. Yeah. As I said, the strength of this equation is because it's very simple. And of course, not everyone wants to use it, but yeah. uh, some calibration is needed. And you know, of course, to, to, to make the parameters physically correct. Thank you, Brian. I just skimmed it in the beginning when you showed me the yeah. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so soon we will get together. Do you to neki aproksimativni oko 435, on odgovara ovih 0,0023 u nazivniku. I samo trebaš onako kombinaciju temperatura koje su pod potencijom 1,43 dobiti taj broj i ne taj broj šreće za ono 1%, ljevo desno, to će tamo odgovarati ovim srpskim rezultatima i to je ono fuck yeah. Teď to možná má uskávový. Ty máš.